you said that you enjoy my experiments and my yeah little experimental tutorials and you've said that you want to see more of those so here i'm back <laughs> with a really really hard tutorial for myself because this was yeah the pure experiment i made this little stand here to put my signatures in while i'm working on a junk journal project so this is meant to be an yeah some kind of an organizer Uh, that I can use to have not such a mess on my desk so that I can place it like so and then put my signatures in here so that they can lay here and that I can flip through my signatures while I'm working on my journal. So I will demonstrate that here with a book because, yeah, until now, during my Ocean Eyes Junk Journal project, I haven't any signatures yet. So uh, let's demonstrate that here with this book. So please imagine that this book are some signatures. Then you can put them into here. They are laying there, organized and not uh, yeah, relatively chaotic on your desk. And you can flip through the, the single signatures that you have prepared. And you can work on single pages, put them back into their place and um, you will have an organized thing on your desk. So that was the plan. <laughs> and this was really, really difficult for me. And um, please don't expect a professional tutorial when you want to watch this video. If you are expecting that, this is not the video for you. So let's try to do this experiment. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel and you have really strong nerves because you are still here after my little intro and my little information in the intro. So today I'm here with another organization idea for your desk while you are working on a junk journal. Perhaps you know my little Ocean Eyes junk journal series here on my channel that I'm running at the moment and I'm working on my junk journal. And I always have the problem that my signatures are laying around with, yeah, nearly no system. So I came to the idea to take such a book here and make a little stand so that I can uh, put my signatures into that and have them organized in one place. So hopefully later on in this video that will make more sense to you. Uh, if you want to do this, you should search for a relatively big book. So that means um, a book that has a big spine. This spine is approximately six centimeters. And that's also the size of spine that I approximately have for my finished junk journals. And that's the reason why I've chosen such a big book. Um, if you are making yeah, normally only smaller I mean only that's not bad meant of course but if you are making smaller junk journals then of course you can choose a book that has a smaller spine um, please make sure that you have a book that has a really sturdy cover um, and that you choose a size for this book that matches the pages that you normally would have in your finished junk journal I'm showing you here what I mean with a DNA 4 page that I have folded in half so that it's a junk journal page. So then I have DNA 5 and I have chosen a book cover that has um, a little bit more height than the pages. Um, I've decided that because I often have some things that are picking out um, of the top of the journal later. For example, some page tabs or some... Um, decorated paper clips that uh, have some materials that come out on the top. So <clears throat> I have chosen a book cover that is a little bit uh, higher than my DNA 5 page. That's approximately three centimeters, so one and a half on the top and one and a half on the bottom. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so um, perhaps you're wondering why my voice and my uh, my hands are not the same. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, so that's because um, I make a voiceover for this video. I've recorded that in German language for my German subscribers. 
And when I had finished this project, I was sure that I've uh, that I would never be able to make a second of those organizer things. That this was such an experiment and such a difficult thing for me, you can't imagine. So please excuse if not everything is such perfect like in professional yeah, videos that show you this kind of stuff much better. Um, for the width of this junk journal... Uh, Junk journal. Sorry, of this um, book cover, I've chosen um, a little bit smaller size than the pages. I mean that ha this has not to be such long, and um, the pages will stand in there later, really sturdy and safe. And so I've cut a little bit uh, on the right and the left hand side of this uh, book cover. So because of the fact that this spine is really uh, flimsy and yeah not very sturdy, I've decided that I want to reinforce it. And um, that was a happy accident. This part that I have cut from the book cover, this one here, fits exactly um, to this spine. So I decided that I want to glue it there. So if you um, cut more or less and it doesn't fit, then just um, take another book cover and um, cut a piece that fits to your spine. And yeah, that was the first problem. <laughs> I wanted to glue this with Fabri-Tac and this glue didn't want to come out of this bottle. Has anyone please uh, some kind of help for me? that this comes out a little bit smoother or do you have the same problem with this kind of glue? I don't know. I've learned that Fabri-Tac is a really great and strong glue um, from all of you that are speaking English and making English speaking tutorials and I've ordered that on Amazon and I really like this glue but it comes out so hard it's really really yeah <laughs> strange strange thing and a really strange glue um, so okay <laughs> after I had that I um, have put this thing here inside and made sure that I can still flip the front and back cover of this book um, like it normally would be flipped so that nothing is in the way and there's little slots in between are really um, yeah flexible I would say um, then I decided that I want to cover this up <coughs> excuse me please that I want to cover this up as I would do it uh, with a normal junk journal so that this thing uh, will be really flexible in the end and that I can get an angle that I want and with paper that would be not not possible so um, this fabric was not very beautiful this comes from an old pillowcase so um, I decided that I want to um, yeah color that a little bit so I took um, some different mediums and my heat gun and then I had this cool fabric here so I look I think that looks really really beautiful so if you wanted to know that in detail I used this distress oxide forest moss my absolutely favorite color of distress uh, oxides I just applied that and then um, I used some coffee so this bottle only helped me to spray the uh, coffee it's not uh, in there what's written on the bottle and some water to bring the colors a little bit more yeah you know regularly to the fabric and then I just dried it and here um, I'm gluing this with some Mod Podge um, and I made the experience when you want to glue that you have to make sure that the glue is really um, exactly and really good into this little slots there so make sure that you have enough glue uh, in between of the spine and the cover pieces um, then I folded this in half to get approximately the middle of this thing, flipped it over and then I glued it. I used my bone folder to um, make sure that uh, the fabric can go into these little slots. And after that was dry, I, yeah, really, I, I was really struggling with the next steps. So here I'm just um, discussing with myself if I can use some scrapbooking paper, so I've chosen this thing here, uh, that was a really <laughs> fast decision for my personal, uh, you know, <laughs> normally I, I um, 
need longer time to find a paper that I want to use. But I have this here and I got that from a friend from overseas. This is um, some kind of a scrapbooking paper, but a little bit thinner. And I thought that could work really well and that could um, be enough to bring it around this cover. So um, please don't be confused. On the right side um, of the screen, there's laying the rest of this book cover. I only used that um, to find out how wide I want to have the scrapbooking paper to the inside. And I first thought that I want to make some uh, kind of a template out of this leftover book cover piece um, to find the right size to um, yeah, glue that there. But then I realized that um, this whole scrapbooking sheet was not wide enough to um, divide it into two pieces and glue it around. It was, yeah, <laughs> simply not enough for this project. So, um, yeah, I tried something out and measured a little bit. And then I decided that I want to glue um, this part into the cover and the rest to the outside and then cover up the rest <coughs> with some fabric. You will see that in a few seconds. So, um, first of all, I, uh, I'm measuring here um, how wide I want to go into this book. Um, this fabric covers... Um, yeah, a bit of this book cover material. So I don't need so much paper because I don't want to um, cover this whole thing up. So uh, I made some marks there that I can see where I have to put my glue. I know there are many much more easier ways. But in this situation, I was so... Uh, I don't know how to explain that in English. I was so... Mm, yeah, some kind of overwhelm because I wanted to show you this project and I wanted to show you this idea. And I also wanted to let this idea come out of my head. So <laughs> this was before I started recording the German version of the video only in my head. This idea and the whole construction was only in my head. And I think that uh, blocked some logical, um, yeah, some logical steps in my head and here the I would say biggest problem of this whole project uh yeah it's starting right now I don't know what this paper wanted to say to me but this paper was so strange it was so yeah I don't know it was really strange such slippery really thin I couldn't fold it exactly and here you can see I have forgotten to um, cut the right length or, or I mean the right height so I had to cut that while the other piece was um, on the yeah already on the book cover then I tried to fold it over and um, glue the rest and um, yeah I have to say my German subscribers um, they told me that they um, want to see my real craft process, my real expressions. Um, they said to me, and I think um, some of you as the English-speaking community of my channel said that to me as well, um, you said that you want to, um, yeah, see that I'm a normal crafter as well. So, I mean, I am a normal crafter. I'm only a woman who likes to craft, as you perhaps too. So, um, I always was a little bit afraid of not uh, editing such mistakes and not taking out such mistakes of out of my videos. And here you can see that I uh, try to mm, not editing these things too much. I'm taking this paper off because I um, had some really uh, strange things there. There were bubbles below my paper. The paper was not sticking uh, really flat on top of the book cover. Um, and I think in the most of the tutorials, um, the creator would edit the video and cut this part out. And um, they, the most of them would not show you this mistakes. And... I decided that I want to show you that and I want um, to encourage you to go on if something like that happens to you. 
as you can see here, I also forgot to um, glue the rest of the fabric to my book cover when I um, put this scrapbooking paper on a few seconds ago. So in this, this step, I'm repairing this and yeah, trying to glue that to have not more problems when I glue it the second time. So what I want to say is, um, please don't give up. If you have something in your mind and you want to bring that to reality, then please don't give up. And um, I can't translate exactly what I said in the German video because my English vocabulary has not the words that I used in German. But please believe me, um, that are some of the most bad German words that you could ever learn. If you want to learn German and you want to learn bad words, then watch the German version of this video. Um, but <clears throat> I decided to also show you that and um, try to bring into English words what I, um, yeah, this struggling that I went through while I did this. So um, if you want to um, make such an organizer for yourself and you don't want to make such mistakes or you don't want to go through such an experience like I went here, then I can give you some recommendations. Is that a word? <laughs> I can recommend some things to you um, that you perhaps can have in mind if you want to make this by your own. So the first thing is don't take too thin paper. So what you can see there on my desk is definitely too thin to glue it there. Um, I don't know if that is because of the Mod Podge. I thought um, that this paper will soak the Mod Podge a little bit like wallpaper would do it. If you want to put wallpaper to your wall, then you would um, take this special wallpaper glue and put it on there, let it soak a little bit and then you would put it to your wall and that would work. And I thought that this can work here as well, but it was... Oh, I can't tell you, it was so terrible. The next thing was that I wanted to fold this here and I I couldn't fold it. I had such problems and I haven't realized in the first minutes the reason why that was not possible. I tried to um, fold this here with my bone folder and bring this round edge to the paper but I thought, okay, why why is that so strange? It was going back the whole time. Um, and I think um, this paper is really glossy on the back side. I mean, it's some kind of this vintage paper, scrapbooking paper, this, this um, nature paper, recycled paper, or how would you say that? Uh, this brown material, you can see that. But it was so glossy, you can't believe that. And then here I'm realizing why I couldn't fold it. So um, here you can see this little white shit that came out there. This white little thing that was the rest from uh, yeah the inner part of the book cover. When I teared the paper off, uh, you have seen that uh, when it uh, was not glued down completely, I teared it off and then I had this white shit on the back of this scrapbooking paper. And that was the reason why I couldn't fold it around there. And I was, I was, I, I can't tell you, my nerves were like, like <laughs> spreading around everywhere. Um, the back side was already glued relatively good, but then I realized that I have this little shit there and that I have to take that out and I couldn't figure out um, how to do that. So I took this knife first and tried to get this out, but that didn't work so well. So I took that apart a little bit again. Here you can see it and I don't know, can you um, imagine this feeling when you um go some steps uh in the direction of your goal and in the direction of this finished project project and then suddenly something comes out of nowhere and you have to go steps back 
And that's, I think, a really hard thing to live with and to go through. Um, and again, the reason why I'm showing you, you this disaster here is that I want to say um, I have a finished project now. I have my signature organization tool on my desk. It works. It looks beautiful in my eyes and I have managed it. And if I can do it, you can do it as well. And um, there are so many people that are commenting below my videos uh, that they are struggling with different things. I mean, um, not only some motivational things, but also um, struggling with the material, struggling with the mediums. But I think the only way that you can... Um, handle this thing is that you go through it and here I'm talking a little bit about my too small scoreboard <laughs> and when I'm remembering my German words in that video I really have to laugh and that's also a thing um, afterwards you can laugh about what you did you can laugh about your own mistakes and that's also a way to learn I think um, and that's also a way to get bigger with your skills, to uh, improve what you already know and what you already can do. But um, if you don't um, have such experiences, I think um, the way to grow is not such um, successful than when you have such mistakes. I, of course, don't wish you such experiences. And if that happens once a month, it's totally enough <laughs> for my nerves. It's totally enough. But I think we have to go through such situations. Okay, so back to this thing. Um, after I have realized that this white thing there was the the reason why I couldn't fold it, I removed it and then I took my bone folder and tried to get this fold it to the other side and as you can see now it works a little bit better and I could glue the rest with my Mod Podge as well so I had to go over this really often with this bone folder to get this into the right place um, and um, yeah I had to wait really long you know Mod Podge is drying really slowly perhaps it's a good idea and that's also a thing that I could recommend um, to use a glue that dries faster than Mod Podge. Perhaps not as fast as a Fabri-Tec glue would dry, but definitely faster than this Mod Podge thing because that can drive you crazy. Yeah, so um, then I've glued the rest here. Um, and in uh, on this side here, I used more Mod Podge because I thought that it was too less on the front side but that was also a really big, big mistake so if you are watching this and you think oh what's that that's definitely too much Mod Podge please don't use so much um, and another thing that I could recommend is uh, that you send down your uh, your book cover if if it's such glossy as mine here as you can see this is has a surface that's really glossy. It's some kind of plastic thing on top, not like this normal material um, that a book is bound with. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, some kind of plastic. I don't know. Perhaps you can take a sandpaper and sand this down to get a more um, rough surface. And I think then the Mod Podge will go much better into the book. I think here the Mod Podge had no chance to go through this plastic thing and that was the reason why it took so long to dry. And as you can see, I have to squeeze it out to the edges um, to bring this paper down because the Mod Podge had no chance to dry uh, somewhere. Yeah, to, yeah, don't know how to explain that, but I think you know what I mean. Okay, so here we go. Everything is glued. Please don't ask why the distance there uh, between the scrapbooking paper and this little slots and this fabric, uh, you know, can you see that? It's not the same, but please don't ask why it is like that. I think I made some mistakes while I was measuring, but I didn't care about that because I was so happy that this paper was glued to the cover now. <laughs> so 
for this rest here of course i want to cover that up as well and later on this thing will be like this so um, it's not a good idea to glue paper here as well because i have to glue the paper when the book is laying flat on my table and when i fold the book to its uh, position then the paper can tear so i decided to use some fabric as well as you can see i've um, colored that in the same way uh, yeah like the other one and glued that with mod podge and additionally i sealed everything also the scrapbooking paper with some mod podge <coughs> excuse me something is going wrong with my voice today sorry um so this will be the position of this little organizing thing later so from the side it looks like so like yeah a really strange angle i know but i have to find a way now how i can bring this into this position and how i can manage that this thing will not fall to the right side or the, to the left side and i had another problem that i wanted to solve because um yeah here on this front side i wanted to make sure that i can look inside this tool i mean when you have your signatures into this thing later and uh, you have it on your desk then you probably don't have it uh, directly in front of you and if here on the um, on this side is something like this so i just put the book page for demonstration if i would make a wall there then I can't look inside of this and I can't um, look to my signatures um, as good as when this is open. So I tried to find a solution um, to bring this together, but uh, that you can still look through it. So I came to the idea to use this thing here. Uh, as always, I don't know the English name. <laughs> but you can see what it is <laughs> and uh, yeah at this point thank you to all of you who are always helping me with my vocabulary i'm always struggling with some of the words i learned so much from you and i think this is the point that i can um say a really big thank you to you that you help me and that you um give me some words and yeah the cool thing about that is when you write the words that I'm searching for in my videos into the comments, then in the most cases I can remember those words for my next video. So it's really helpful and thank you very much for that. So I've used this thing here and I decided that it looks yeah, really interesting and like a crafter's thing when there are those little charms on this. <laughs> is it a chain? Is it chain? I think it's chain. I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps chain is something totally different. But on this little thing, there are hanging these little charms. And I think that looks great for a junk journaler. So in the end, this thing shall be like so. And I wanted to make a hole with my crocodile into this cover. And then later put an eyelet through it so that the hole um, yeah, is really sturdy. So I took my crocodile and... Um, don't know if you experienced that by yourself, but this um, ruler of this crocodile, I think the person who has made this ruler and has thought about that, this person haven't had a good day. I was totally in love with this crocodile when I got it and when I used it the first time, but this ruler, I don't know, but this thing... On my crocodile, it doesn't stay in place. Do you have this problem as well? And do you have a solution for that? If yes, please leave a comment. I would be more than happy because um, every time when I wanted to do, try to measure this, the ruler went back into the machine and that oh yeah, such things can drive me crazy. So I made this hole there and I decided to make the hole on this side first, measure it, and then put the hole on the same place on the other side. So um, I haven't measured after I had the both holes. <laughs> because I was sure that I would get really angry if there's a millimeter um, difference between the both holes. <laughs> and then 
I realized that I only have three colors of eyelets. So here you can see me deciding that I want to use a golden eyelet um, and this um, golden uh, thing here that's normally used to close envelopes. Um, that was not such a good idea. Um, I mean, the color fits really well. Um, the eyelet color was okay later uh, because I had the bigger problem to get this into uh, the right position and I couldn't uh, fold those wings of this little thing there so good to the inside. As you can see, it's a little bit loose. And uh, if you're watching this and you want to try that by your own, please make sure that you uh, find a way to bring this connection in between of those both uh, book cover pieces yeah, in a way that's really sturdy. I think that is not the best solution that I have here. And I think I will also change that and perhaps um, just uh, take a thread or something like that to bring that really sturdy there to this position. Um, so it's not, not the, the optimal uh, thing. You know, um, so here on the front, we have this uh, thing so that we can look inside of this tool. On the back side, we don't need to look inside so that we can make a little wall to the back side um, that makes this whole thing a little bit more sturdy. And um, in this stage, when you put signatures into this organization thing, it will fall to the right or to the left side. So we need something here for this part of this thing. And I decided to use a, a book cover as well. Um, as you could see a second ago, it's a really thick book cover so that I have the chance to glue that relatively uh, yeah, easy. Um, so I took this thing here um, yeah, only one part of this. So uh, a part that's big enough to make this little uh, thing there, this little wall. Um, now I have forgotten what I wanted to say. Uh, ah, okay, so now I have it. Sorry. Um, you have to decide, um, yeah, the angle of this thing. As you can see, this thing there on the front it makes um, this angle really flexible I have put it to this book cover piece and uh, I try to get it in the most <sighs> how can I say that so that the angle is the most wide as possible hopefully that makes sense and then I measured this um, yeah to get the right uh, proportions for this and when I cut that I had this little things here, of course, from the sides. If you want to do, to do that by yourself, please don't throw these triangles away because now on these triangles, of course, you have here the exact angle that you would need to put that here as an additional stand to the outside. And you will see later on in this video that I also will do that to bring that in a more sturdy uh, condition than it is now. But in this stage, I first only thought about that and saved those pieces. For this back thing, I uh, wanted to make sure that I have the right position where I want to glue that. So um, to don't lose uh, the inner measurements of this little tool you have to glue that um yeah to the very back of this material there um i decided that i later on additionally wanted to use some of this tape that you can make wet put it on your piece and then when it's dry it's really sturdy i don't know the english word but on the german amazon you can buy that it's yeah looks like some kind of masking tape but you have to uh, put a little bit of water to it with a paintbrush and then you can um, position it really exactly and then when it's dry it's really sturdy at this moment when i recorded the video my tape didn't arrive i have ordered some on amazon but it was not here when i made this so i wanted to have this finished i was in such a bad condition with my emotions I really can't explain that. 
Um, so I haven't thought about um, making this, yeah, that I can use this special tape later, but I only wanted to have this and glue it there. So I covered this up with some uh, beautiful Italian paper. Francesca, if you're watching, thank you very much for sending this beautiful paper for, to me. It's so gorgeous and I um, decided to use this here so that I always can see it. And um, yeah, <laughs> mille grazie Francesca. <laughs> thank you so much. So perhaps she's not watching, <laughs> but perhaps <laughs> she sees this. Yeah, okay. Um, so... Then I uh, used my Fabri tag as well um, and tried to glue this here. Um, you could also use hot glue. I first thought I would like to use hot glue because that dries really fast, much faster than the Fabri tag. But hot glue um, is squeezing out really much uh, when you press something like this to another piece. And I knew that I wanted to use this special tape later and for that um, I was afraid that I have this glue in this uh, edge there where I wanted to put the tape and that of course would not be possible. Don't know if that makes sense but perhaps later on uh, it will make sense when you see how the tape is attached. So here um, I tried to bring that in place, that was not so easy. But uh, I think with hot glue, this thing would be impossible because hot glue is drying such fast. With Fabri-Tec, you have the chance to move that around a little bit. And yeah, in the end, it looks like this. Um, while this was drying, I have pressed it the whole time with my fingers so um, that these pieces are together really, really well. And as you can see, it looks great. <laughs> So here I was really happy, but um, I still had the problem that when I put something in here, so I used some heavier books uh, to demonstrate that, um, this thing will fall to the side. If you have a, a lighter thing that you want to put inside there, if your paper is not so um, heavy, then it would be no problem. But when you put something heavier in it, as you can see here, it will fall to the side and that's of course not so good when all of the signatures are on the right side or on the left side it will fall yeah to that side and of course we don't want that so um yeah i tried around a little bit with these books to um figure out um how much stability stability is that a word i think so uh i have to put to the sides and then I decided that this little triangles can be the solution when I put them into the middle of the length of this thing. So then later on they will be here so that the pressure of the signatures can be there. I think it's not a good idea to put it here to the, uh, through the end, even if you perhaps think that would look more harmonious, that... Um, can bring more sturdiness to this front side, uh, front part. But I think uh, when you put it there, that's not so good. Here in the middle, you can um, make sure that this stays a straight line, this book cover material, and that it not bends like so. I mean, not such much, but uh, probably with the time that can happen. So I decided to put that into the middle of this length of the book cover I took the rest of my scrapbooking paper and of this paper that I got from Francesca and I uh, covered these triangles up because I wanted to have them a little bit beautiful but of course you can also use them as they are because they only have this function to yeah make this thing sturdy um, and while I did that I realized that um, the fabric tag is removing the pattern from the scrapbooking paper. Um, if you probably have the same paper like this, I don't know where that comes from. Here you can see that. Please don't use Fabri-Tec on top um, because, yeah, can you see that? The the pattern is, uh, yeah, it's, it's falling off. I don't know what happened there, but I can show you here on this little scrap. There you can see this black ink or whatever it is, black paint, this material from this pattern it comes off there 
and I was so happy, <coughs> excuse me, please, that the Mod Podge that I used before to seal that whole thing didn't the same thing to my pattern. I mean, I have um, sealed this whole organization thing with the Mod Podge, not imaginable what uh, would happen when, uh, yeah, Mod Podge is reacting the same like Fabri-Tech. Oh my goodness. So um, I attached that here with some Fabri-Tech as well, as you can see. And then here, <laughs> you can see this special tape. So during the process of recording that video, it arrived from Amazon. And here you can see um, it is already attached. So um, here it's a little bit wet, still a little bit wet, but you can see how I glued it to make this much more sturdy. When this um, tape is dry, the whole thing will get really, really sturdy, I think. Um, and yeah, as I said during this whole experimental tutorial, um, this is no professional guide to make such a tool. It is functional, it works for me, but as you can see, this tape, of course, is not used as it is meant to use. Yeah, so the, all those professional scrapbookers who make these awesome and beautiful boxes from scratch um, they use it in a different way I think they put the naked materials together the naked parts of the box and then glue the tape and then decorate the whole thing with with scrapbooking paper and not like I did it here but because of this experimental process it's like so and for me it works I'm a junk journaler I, I can't help myself it's like it is but um, yeah uh, you can also of course take some stamps and some ink and stamp some lettering on top of this if you use the tape in the same way <laughs> like I use it here um, and then you will uh, get this covered up and it looks like it is meant to be like it is. And as you can see now, here I'm putting some heavy books inside. Um, it will stand. I, I mean, yeah, it stands. <laughs> it works. I was so happy. I can't tell you how, how happy I was in this moment. And these books, of course, are much heavier than, for example, 10 or 12 um, junk journal signatures would be. Um, but I wanted to try it out with a little bit heavier things that later in reality will be in this uh, organization thing. And now I can fold my pages. I'm so happy I have um, all the papers and I have so many also suggestions from you what I can put into my Ocean Eyes junk journal. I have everything on my desk. It's a whole mess. And now I can finally... Um, fold the pages, bring them into size and store them here while I'm working on the single pages. And I'm so happy. You can't believe it. And if you also have this problem that you don't know where to put your signatures while you're working on a junk journal, then please try to make such a thing for yourself. Or perhaps you can also find a box or whatever uh, that already looks like this shape I have here. Uh, that's perhaps also possible, but I also wanted to use my old book covers. That's also a point that I yeah, use what I have. So perhaps you can find a totally other solution for this. But I hope that you could learn something. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this process, even if, if it was a little bit chaotic. So thank you very much for watching. See you the next time. Bye bye.